I have got a treat today. This is Captain Patrick Gardner. Pat, I've known Pat for several years. We've fished many pro level tournaments together. The guy blows my mind with the knowledge he has of wade fishing and trout, big trout. And don't get me wrong, the guy is nasty drifting out of the boat, but the stuff he lays on me daily while we're wade fishing, he'll just say something and it blows my mind. It's stuff I haven't heard from people that, that have been fishing for 50 years. So today it's a special treat. Pat's gonna tell us about what he uses to plan a trip, what he wants to see when he gets there, what he throws to catch them. Um, check him out, Pat Gardner, Patrick Gardner on Facebook, Captain Pat Gardner yeah. on Instagram. Go look at the fish this guy's been catching. And, and not just him, customers, uh, friends, people that are with him, 30 inches, 28 inches. I mean, the guy, he's dirty. So I'm gonna link, down below, I'm gonna link Pat's Instagram, Pat's Facebook, go check him out. Um, any trips that I get that either I can't run or I don't feel like they fit what I've got going on at the moment, I refer over to Pat. Pat, the people I refer to him have hit me back, said they had a great time. If, if Pat doesn't do a good job of advertising himself, I'm gonna be honest, you do not. So, hey, here it is, meet Pat Gardner, and we're gonna get Pat to tell us how to wade fish for big trout. All right, so let's jump right into it. Pat, you pull up to the dock, you launch your boat, you're gonna go wade fishing today. What, what goes through your head? And this applies whether you're walking in, in a boat, it doesn't matter. What goes through your head when, whenever you think, where's the first place I'm gonna go this morning? Biggest thing is going to be wind direction and tidal movement. Um, it's going to let me know on which side of the bay I want to be on, rather than north or south, and then how I'm going to be able to approach different areas to be able to fish it, because a lot of that's going to be dictated on the wind and the, and the tide. So do you just get to the dock and you look up at the wind and you look at the boards at the harbor to see what the tide is, or do you, you know, prep for that a day or two in advance? Yeah, so the night before I'll really look at it and take good look. So when I get to the dock, you know, I'm... I already pretty much know where I'm going to be heading uh, that morning, but as it's been lately, the uh, forecast hasn't always been right. So uh, sometimes you got to make those decisions on the fly, for sure. Yeah, the forecast the forecast killed us today. It wasn't even close to what the forecast was, and to be honest, looking at radar, it was terrifying. And we ran all around trying to avoid storms that, frankly, didn't happen on on our end of the bay. So on your way down to where you're going, you're, you're going through your head, you know, you have these plans. Now maybe when you get to the dock, maybe the forecast wasn't reliable and you're gonna, you know, switch it up. But it, it's something that you've been thinking about for a while. So let, let's move on. So now we know where we're going, it's our first place. We get there, let's call it right at daylight. Whenever you pull up to your spot, what are some things that you're looking for to confirm, hey, this is where I wanna get out at? Yeah, I'm definitely, I'm looking for bait, I'm looking for slicks, I'm looking to see how the tide might be pulling through certain guts or coming around points. Um, really just looking for, you know, what you would call fishy water. So, um, looking at shorebirds, pelicans, um, just trying to take an overall view of the entire area. And uh, for the most part, when you're pulling up to these places, if you fish them enough, if your areas, you know where those fish are going to be laying. And um, if it is, you know, what you want to see in those certain areas, you can pretty much tell when you're pulling up if it looks right or not. So you're, you're looking for signs of life. You pull up and there's 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 water pulling around a point. Maybe there's some bait popping in it. Um, birds stand on the shoreline. That that's been that's been big for for Pat lately. I'm not going to take any credit to the wade fishing. I haven't gotten to do much. I've been doing a lot of red fishing, but but Pat was telling me today that right now he is really liking to see shore birds because that's as we've talked about before that's fish you know pushing bait up towards the shore and so that that tells him that hey this is a good place to get out and stop now one thing we saw this morning were mullet just jumping everywhere there there wasn't a spot this big for more than five seconds without a mullet coming out of it but pat and i were talking back and forth and you know i looked at him and said have you seen any scared mullet yet and he said he had seen one or two so instead of the you know the long the long leap and just the leisurely stuff you see mullet doing we're looking for ones that are kind of skipping along the water at one point we looked up against the shoreline and about probably 10 12 mullet at a time just just kind of sprayed out so that's what that's a lot what pat's talking about whenever he says seeing bait right now in the summertime you can pull up to just about any given place and if it is if it's anything more than deader than a hammer on the bay 
you're gonna see bait jumping, but what you want, what you really wanna look for is the, the fast movement. I like to see a mullet come out of the water and his tail still flapping, or maybe you know he comes out and kind of does a little flip or something. Something that says that that fish is frantically trying to get away from something. All right, so you get there, you get out of the boat, and what? It, it's still daylight. You've just got there. What's the first lure you're probably gonna tie on? Top water for sure. Depending on what the wind's doing. Um, for the most part, I've been very shallow. If you know my kneecaps are getting wet right now. Uh, then that's that's not normal so um, you know we've been in two foot of water or less for the most part you know sometimes they'll be on the drop-offs and you'll slide off into that thigh deep maybe even waist deep water but for the most part they've been pretty skinny so I'll start with the top water as long as the wind allows me to throw it you know if it's blowing 30 I'm not gonna be throwing a top water but start off with the top water and then make moves from there now is there a particular color you like to start with shiny painted uh yes and no i i'm a big fan of the spooks so super spook spook juniors or even the one knockers um been throwing a lot of the uh gold and pink when i was down south uh we caught a ton of fish on those here in matagorda i've been throwing a lot of the speckled trout color um a lot of my color choices will dictate on the amount of light coming through is it an overcast day is it you know, is it really a bright day? Um, I'm gonna let those kind of things dictate what color I'm throwing. Yeah, so and those are some of my favorites there. For, for trout, I absolutely love a one knocker. For redfish, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be more towards a skitter walk. Don't ask yeah. me why, it's probably just a confidence thing, but I'm gonna throw a ton of skitter walk for redfish. I'm gonna throw a lot of one knockers for trout. I even like, I like the spook juniors. I'm not throwing a lot of super spooks right now though. The bait's a yeah. little bit smaller, so we're, we're we're concentrating on the smaller stuff. In fact, this morning I was throwing that little uh, mirror lure, mirror mullet that I showed you guys in my favorite springtime baits video. I would say that it that it, it worked great. The bite was pretty dead. Um, I had one good trout, one big redfish. Pat had some redfish, and then he had four or five blowups, but they just weren't really cooperating this morning. It was windy. We'll talk about that later. It wasn't. It, I don't even want to yeah. talk about. I don't want to talk about it no, anymore. I don't want to talk about it. Okay. So you get out, you throw your top waters, you're, you're kind of, you're, you're using them as, as like a search bait. You know, in the early in the morning, they're more apt to blow up on them. Now, don't get that wrong. You can catch a fish on the top water all day long. Seen it, done it, it, it's a thing. But you get out in the morning, you're throwing your top water, using a search bait, you get some blow ups, you catch some, however it may be. But now it's later on in the morning and we are at, we're in the middle of June right now. So now it's starting to warm up. It's 9.30, 10 o'clock in the morning. Now what are you going to throw? Yeah, and like he said, I, there are days where I will keep a topwater on all day long. Um, last week, for example, we were in Mansfield for four days. And two of the days, they munched on topwaters from first light until four in the afternoon. I mean, all day long topwater bite. You know, those are the days you kind of dream about. Um, but for the most part, um, here in Matagorda, you know, you'll get a good topwater bite first thing in the morning, and then I'm going to most likely switch over to a tail and that's this time of year um, with probably an eighth ounce jig head 16th ounce something light keep it up in the water column in the winter time i'll uh 90 of the time i'm throwing a corky and i'll leave that on all day but for the most part this time of year i'll switch over to a tail and uh go to work with that pat taught me into throwing tails this morning and it they're, they're very effective you can probably catch more fish on a tail um, you know, per hour of the day. It, 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 when it's a negative bite, positive bite, anything, your tail has a very good chance. Me, myself, I'm a quirky guy. I, I wanted to throw quirkies all morning. I'm gonna be dead honest. The reason I didn't is because I had two in my box and they were both rusted up. So I threw a tail all morning too. We had a, we had a couple of flounder, you know, smack them pretty good. But okay, so, and, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, Pat, but from what I'm hearing from you is you're gonna throw a top water until you quit get a, getting action on it and then you're going to move over to a tail yeah right and then so you, you'll throw a tail you know all day um and then later in the evening we'll often switch back to top waters you know right before sunset or something like that whenever the the sun isn't as bad and you know maybe it's cooled off the surface the water's cooled off a little bit um you're seeing maybe seeing some blow-ups yeah and depending on the water depth and kind of the areas you're fishing i will put on a soft dine as well this time of year it can be extremely effective yeah. 
Um, so that's probably one of my other go-tos once the sun's up pretty high. And that's what I was reaching for today was the, you know, the Paul Brown soft dines. Is there a particular, you know, rat tail, paddle tail color? Is that something you're just looking at the bait right now? Or are you, you, you have something you're going to go to like every time? Yeah, I've been throwing a lot of little johns right now, but that's also just predicated on the time of year. We got quite a bit of smaller bait. For some reason, they've just been really liking the little johns. Um, but I throw mainly Little John's, uh, Gamblers, if I want something with a little bit of a tail, I throw a lot of Gamblers. So um, the, and the Little John's you're talking about, they're made by Mirror Lure. They're probably, what, three and a half inches long. Yeah, they're short. They're tough little guys, and they're cool lures. You can catch as many fish as you want on them before you tear them up. Now, me personally, I think the Little John's are working really well right now because there's a lot of shrimp in the water. It's a, it's a small, sleek bait. I mean, it literally just like a long cone. And whenever you pop it, it kind of gives that, that shrimp action. And one thing that I've noticed that is when shrimp are around, for some reason, fish love purple. Um, in the fall when the shrimp are heavy, in the spring when the shrimp are heavy, I'm throwing a lot of purple. Whether or not I use a white tip tail or, or a chartreuse tail, you know, maybe that's situational, but I, I've noticed that, that the purple seems to be really good when there's shrimp around. Absolutely. So. And don't let it fool you either. You know, a lot of people say, you know, big bait, big fish. And that is true, absolutely, a lot of times of the year. But, I mean, we've had a handful of fish over 30 inches in the past couple of weeks come off of, you know, the little tiny little John. Yep. And I don't know how many 28s, you know, we've caught a lot of big fish on small lures right now. Yeah, Pat's been catching some absolute monsters on the bay. Um, you guys know me. You know I've, I've trout fished for, you know, 10 years plus but my love my love at the moment is red fishing i've got tournaments going on that's what i'm guiding on mostly i, I have some trout trips but i'm doing a lot of red fishing and pat's been sending me these pictures and it, it almost makes me want to put down that medium heavy rod and pick up a medium light and get back out there with them so so there you have it you know it's it's, it's the thoughts and the mind of a great fisherman so i learn something every day fishing with pat so go check pat out on facebook um, if you're interested in booking a trip with him, hit him up. If you can't find the information you need, hit me up. Um, can't recommend him more. Hey, Pat, thanks for being here. Enjoyed fishing with you this morning. Uh, Pat and I still have about six days left together down here. We have, we have trips the rest of the week. Just we, we got off today because of weather. So, hey, Captain Pat Gardner catches big fish, gives good tips. See you on the next one.